we're coming from Hamburg. We work at Wunder Mobility there, pushing forward the future of mobility. And yes, we're going to talk about one use case that we actually thought that it was interesting and brought lots of learnings about how Elixir and how the Beam actually works. Yeah, so let's start. The title of the talk is The Many Ways to Hold the Token. So it's about us sharing our experience on how we approached a certain problem. So what is this about? So imagine the year is 2019, and you wake up, you look to the Kanban, Kanban board or whatever it is that you're using, and there's a story about showing the current weather for the day or something like that. So, and then, so what you would do is prob probably not um, go to Google and search for how to build a weather station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not to build, how to build a weather station. So you would probably go to Google and search for is there a weather API available that I can use? So, but the thing is with tokens, the, the one way to authenticate ourselves into their platform is to use tokens. But the thing is with tokens, it is not forever, so it expires. So that's one of the problems that we, we have. And so this talk is about explaining or demonstrating all the approaches, most of the approaches that we did on addressing that problem. So let's jump into the first strategy. Actually, let's take a look at what we're actually building upon. We have created a little small, a simple application or an idea for us to keep in mind so that you guys understand what it is that we are actually talking about. And let's imagine that we have this. We have uh, some sort of weather app that is communicating to an external provider and that it has a very simple uh, API that just gets the current weather. Now, the thing that happens is that we're going to take a look at that fake provider. Right now, we built something for, the, for, for showing how we could work and to simulate what would the network connection actually might look like. And what we have is that we have this fake provider. And obviously, it has at least two different things. The first of them is that it has the need to actually authenticate uh, given some credentials. So we're authenticating with this external provider. The process of authenticating and getting the token back is probably going to take some time because of the network latency. And after you get the token back, you actually need to, to, to provide it back on each one of the requests so that the provider knows that you are really you. And what we're actually going to look at is that this token holding part. And during our presentation, we're going to explore four different ways that we actually tried to reason about what, what is the responsibility of this token holder and how we can actually explore this, uh, explore this. So how about you tell me about the first one, Vince? The first strategy is not holding at all, right? Because the title of this talk is about holding a token. Then the first strategy is not holding it. So first of all, holding a token is actually an optimization already. So you may or may not need it at all. So let's see how we would put this into code. So every time we, <coughs> we, get, the we, need to, we get the weather from the provider, we need to authenticate. So, so authenticate, we pass in the credentials, and then now we get the token, then we ask the provider, what's the current weather? So there are some drawbacks into this, because the provider would probably hate you, because you're sending, a, you're sending them a lot of requests. And also, we're practically doubling the number of requ requests that we make. Right, so, and I think now we should go to the next step, which is actually holding a token. Okay, so this is the name of the strategy that we like the most. I feel like Sleeper Worker is quite cool, and it's actually the first one that is really holding a token. So what we're going to see is that, let's take a look at the, uh, okay, so at, first of all, we actually are going to write some code, so let's write some tests for it, and this is a test that we're going to carry around with us uh, across all of the different scenarios, and it's very basic. It's just like almost a sanity check for you to see that after your application is started and your tests are running, you can actually fetch the token from your token holder. And when you go back and see what we had before without holding it at all, we see that we're calling directly the fake provider. Now we're going to put the token holder in place of it and actually use the token holder to be able to fetch uh, the token. But of course, if we're fetching it from there, this means that it actually ended up being there in the first place. Uh, so to fetch the token, uh, we are using the application environment. And what we do is that we get it straight from the application environment, but how did it end up being there? So we take a look at 
we have inside of our token holder one function that is the refresh token. And what it actually does is that it's going to be the one responsible for communicating with the external provider, getting the token, and then putting it inside of the application environment. But then it has a process leap that is going to wait for a bit and then call itself uh, again in a cycle that is constantly going to be updating, refreshing the token depending on the interval that we actually configure that. Now, of course, we need to start this somehow, and we put it into the application supervision tree that we have. Now, you see that it's very simple. It's just a task that is starting with the function that we pass along. But, of course, there is a big problem in this. The first of all is that the application environment is actually global. So if I want to have multiple instances of the, my token holder, I simply, they are all going to be updating the same key in my application environment. So this is bad. And the second one is actually about what happens in, oh, 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 we are using this process.sleep. And if we take a little look at the documentations of the process.sleep, we got straight away, use this function with extreme care. And what it mentions is that every time that you feel like you have the need for using process.sleep, and I feel guilty for having used process.sleep like lots in tasks before we knew better, then there's always a better, more precise, faster way, and sane way for you to be reasoning about it. Now, that we do not want, we want to create this more individualize uh, more contained environments, and also that we want to get rid of using this process.sleep, do you have a better idea, Vince? Which is the third strategy. So the third strategy is actually using GenServer. And um, so just like the previous strategy, we're going to start something in the supervision tree. So in this one, we in, in the previous strategy, we started a task. But on this strategy, we're going to start a GenServer. So how do we actually fetch the token from the gen server? So we send a synchronous call to the gen server to tell and telling it to fetch a token. And then on the handle call, callback that we have, we reply, we reply the token that came from the gen server state. But how does the token end up in the gen server state? So on our init callback, we do the fake provider authentication. And then we schedule a message to send to ourselves to refresh the token. And then we set the initial state of the gen server to be the token that we got from the fake provider. So when we receive the refresh message that we have scheduled before, then an, our handle info would react to it, which is basic, what it basically does is to authenticate itself again, get the new token, and set it to its state. But hmm, I think there's a problem with the code. And you're very correct, Vince, because one of the things that we do know is that in order for the application supervision tree to be able to follow up with its work, it's necessary that the init callback has already returned. And now what we're doing is that we're doing an expensive operation into the init callback of our gen server. So they, uh, we're basically bringing our application into a halt during the startup. And we do not want to do that. We, want to, we know that we want to do better. And what we can do, we, we already see that the token is being refreshed and set in the handle info callback. Now, wha what w you probably think that you can simply do is to completely em omit the part in which you do the initial setup, the initial communication with the external provider from the init callback and actually just put it outside in the handle info. And then you have this process send after that is actually sending a message to itself as the first thing that it, the gen server is going to do uh, without any kind of waiting before sending the message. But there, this is also a big problem. And for quite a while, this would be the, the go-to way of solving this in Elixir. But uh, ever since Elixir 1.7 and OTP 21, we actually have a better way. We have something that came to rescue us for exactly this type of situation, that is the handle continue callback. And what the handle continue callback does is that it actually enables us to have more control and to execute something before our gen server has the chance to consume any other messages. And it's very interesting that we can actually use the handle callback, and it's not only the, on the init function, the init callback, but we can also use it with the handle cast. We can also use it with the handle call and with the handle info. So it's uh, just, uh, it, it was actually 
preparing to do this that we realized that we're going through the docs and saying, hey, you can actually use this with the other callbacks of a gen server as well. And this opens up for possibilities of perhaps you want to uh, give back a response in a call and then go straight away to do some other kind of work before you're able to answer to other messages. But what happens here is that we have our init that does basically doesn't do much. It's just going to call the handle continue straight away. And the init just set the, uh, uh, the state of the token as not being anything, as nil. And then the handle continue is the one that is going to straight away execute and fetch the token. This unblocks our, applica uh, our application supervision tree from, uh, completely boot uh, from completely booting up. Now, there is, of course, a trade-off a, a trade of this approach, and is that we're still using a gen server. And because we are using the gen server, the access, this fetch token function that we're using, gets sequentialized. So the access to the token is all sequential. This means that if more, um, many users want to access it for the same uh, time, it's going to go through the gen server bottleneck. But you have to ask yourself, OK, I know that this is a thing, that gen server sequentialized access to its state. But is this a problem for me? Uh, it's because it's already really fast. Like for you to handle, for you to end up going into this kind of problems, this means that you have like lots and lots of traffic. So, uh, but even then, uh, we thought, okay, but let's try to see where this can go. How can I actually still use my gen server? And how can I still uh, do some sort of optimization to actually make this token be accessed in a parallelized way? So, do you have an idea about that, Vince? So for the fourth strategy, we're still using Gen Server, but now with ETS. So the difference from before is we create the new table and the init callback. We create an ETS table, which has an access of protected, because we, we want the Gen Server process to, to actually write to the table and other global process or any other process to read from it. And as you can see, the state we do is we don't care about it anymore, so we just put nil. And on our handle continue or handle info, instead of setting the token on our state, we just, in, we just insert it into our ETS table. And the, so how do we get the token now? So we have this function called lookup, which actually matches the token key to the token store, which is the, the table, the ETS table that we have. And then we just return the actual token that we get. And so we return to this test. So in this part, I would, I would assume that my token is in the table and everything would pass and stuff. But the thing is, it fails. And again, there's something wrong. So, but there would, there's some probably solution for it, right? So what happens is that let's take a look at what we're actually doing. And first, let's take a look at how our test is actually a failing. So this is the failure that we're having. When we actually try to access the, the token from the ETS table, we'd see that it was actually never set. It's not finding any keys. Uh, it's not finding the entry on the ETS table. But now we think this wasn't a problem before when we were using just the gen server state. So there's something odd going on here. And let's look again at our, okay, so yes. Let's look again at what's happening in this function. Uh, uh, the ETS lookup table is actually completely independent from the gen server being started at all. So this means that once the test is actually going to run, which is basically after application has booted up, we do not have any guarantees that the handle continue callback has already executed at all. So we're in the situation in which OK, the gen server booted up, it's in, in it was uh, blazingly fast, but now the handle continue is still executing, and we are trying to run our test. And we, we try, like, what can we do to make this better? In our use case, the only thing that actually mattered for us is that as soon as the application started up, we had to have the token there. And your use case might be a little different. Maybe it's completely fine for you not to have anything on the state in the beginning. Maybe uh, you need the token to be there. In our case, we kind of needed the token to be there. So in our test, we, we actually do this recursive call to actually try fetching, try uh, looking for the entry in the ETS table as, uh, for as as long as it actually ends up being there. So this is something that we know it's kind of hacky, it's, 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 uh, it's funky looking, but it, it, it actually works. And it, it made, a, made our test pass, the test is happy. And after this, we explored like, uh, 
Other options as well was what we could do, uh, but we understand that it really depends on the business to business case of what it is that you are trying to do or how important it is for you to have uh, your token there in certain specific times during the life cycle of your application. So uh, as a summary, let's go back and take a look at all of the different approaches that we talk about. Yes. So, yeah, so you might be wondering, we presented all these four approaches and what are you actually using? So, uh, funnily enough, then for quite some time, we're not actually holding a token because we realized that we're not actually sending a bunch of requests to this provider. So we just realized that no, it's, it's maybe it's not maybe it's not worthwhile to create these gen servers and stuff. And then even though the, the sleeper worker for me, it's like it has this huge drawback of using the application environment and using the process.sleep in there and the application environment being shared by everyone. So I really like the, the gen server state, but straight away we hit this, gen, okay, the, there's the gen server and it's a bottleneck. So I, uh, the, the approach that I like the most is that actually we can use the gen server with an ETS table. Of course, this is what we tried after, uh, while we're in the process of actually building this up, we looked a lot around and we see that there are even more uh, other choices that, there are, that you can use instead of like even for storing global uh, state, like there's some macro magic that you can do. But for our use case, for uh, in general, it's about you understanding what is your problem, what are the, ne the necessities of your use case. And for us, for quite a while, not, to, not holding the token was simply fine. And yes, so yep. it, once again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here. We come from Wunder, so we are if not- If anyone of you are curious, then yeah. you can just talk to us. So we're not actually taking questions uh, now, but we're very, uh, I think that we're time sensitive. And if you have any sort of, if you wanna uh, be curious about what we do, uh, how we came to this, just come and talk to us. We're very friendly. Or other strategies that you have to think of, then. We can talk, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you.